Okay, here we go to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we have an exciting update from the brand Oak and Oscar. A little about them, they are founded back in 2015 and they are US based. And as well as enthusiast run. They really focus on small batch releases of original minimalist aesthetic sports watches. Now in terms of the type of watch, I could consider this an everyday watch. Um, some key common characteristics and design language. When we're looking for something you could wear every day, of course you're gonna want that versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes. This could also be a traveler's watch because it does have the GMT complication, um, which allows you to track multiple time zones. And it also even has, of course, the 24 hour rotating bezel, which means you can track up to three time zones, uh, which I think is pretty outstanding. This is the Humboldt GMT in white. And it's essentially a rugged adventure watch ready to go anywhere. It's Swiss powered, has anti-shock properties, anti-magnetic, and then of course the GMT function in an all brushed stainless steel case at 40 millimeters uh, with a bi-directional bezel and 20 atmospheres or 200 meters of water resistance. It's available on this outstanding fully articulated bracelet with a new toolless quick adjust clasp. So it is just a spec beast. Um, but I think even above the fact that it is well specced is it's extremely well designed and I think that's something that goes underappreciated within today's watch releases. I feel like there's a lot that gets released that is really just kind of following a certain formula uh, that is you know living off of bullet points but I will say Oak and Oscar have really differentiated themselves as a brand because of their very unique design aesthetic that is actually very pleasing to the eye. It's great to look at uh, from that perspective. So not only are you getting something that, you know, gives you a nice tactile interaction with that you really enjoy. Um, and of course the fit and finish are top notch, uh, but it actually has its, its own distinctive look and it has a design that isn't derivative of something else. It's not trying to be the cheaper, more affordable version of something. It's not trying to be the more expensive premium version of something else. It's really just trying to be the very best version of its own thing, which I absolutely can't appreciate. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, a lot in frame here. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea and that this is what I really love about Oak and Oscar is they're not just a brand, a brand based off of a couple of strong models. They're a complete brand and that's something that I got to really talk about with, with Chase uh, in the ownership over at Oak and Oscar um, at this past uh, uh, wind up San Francisco, the wind up watch fair. I was able to have a couple drinks and some dinner uh, with the team and I have to say uh, it was really great. And one of the things that I really keyed in on and continue to appreciate about their brand is that, uh, yeah, again, they're not just based off of, oh, they have this cool watch, you know, oh, there's just, they do the best Submariner homage, right? Like that's not them at all. There's more to it. I mean, they're, they don't want to be a lifestyle brand by any means, but there's definitely, I think, more of a feeling of community around the brand um, than you'll find in most micro brands, which I can appreciate. And they even sent me over this sweet Oak and Oscar cap. Um, and that's something I talked to them about was leveraging the soft goods because Oak and Oscar is actually really cool branding. And I think it stands for more than just quality timepieces. Um, again, it's being part of a community. And from every Oak and Oscar video I've done on the channels thus far, you'll see that Oak and Oscar community chime in, um, you know, re really passionate about what they like and, uh, you know, what they believe in when it comes to this brand. So I did want to showcase that. Um, also, you know, just a couple other bits and bobs because I do think they also fall under, um, you know, gear, right? Like they actually make really cool, like this watch wallet that comes with it is really finely crafted and it makes me think of kind of the EDC space. So I got a little EDC pen here um, from Billet Spin Titanium, an American based brand as well, as well as this actually pretty cool um, limited edition. Um, I don't think it was meant to be limited, uh, but it was a limited run of James Brand, um, USA built. Uh, knives. This is the Clovis. It's a button lock and uh, made in the USA. And uh, but although now it's discontinued and they're uh, 
top tier model actually isn't even isn't made in the USA anymore. Uh, again, it just goes to show that you can be USA um, based and the stuff doesn't necessarily have to be made in the USA or at least every little piece and bit and bob for it to really be an American brand. And I think o Oak and Oscar do a really great job with that. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Check this guy out, wow. Let's just allow the camera your screen to just soak in some time in terms of this design, this aesthetic, the font that's being used. I mean, uh, it just, it speaks to me, guys. I really, really dig this piece. Uh, this actually goes for uh, $21.50 on bracelet or $19.25 on the Horween leather strap. And then it also includes a complimentary NATO um, either way. So let's go ahead and kind of pull some of the the bits and the bobs out of the way here. So you get this cool NATO strap, um, which is really nice. And I like the orange accent stitching. I haven't really seen anybody do that. And then even the hardware itself is actually really nicely done. Uh, for me though, this thing is so gorgeous on the bracelet. You know I'm a bracelet guy, um, but man, I think color wise, this really, really pops. Um, that. <laughs> That's gonna look outstanding. Honestly, it looks really great on uh, similarly toned uh, leather as well. Um, but I will say that when it comes to, you know, on the bracelet, that just for me keys into a little bit more of a classic steel sports watch aesthetic, uh, which I really like. So it does have. Um, oh well, let's get into the dimensions here. It's 39 and a half millimeters across from my calipers and then it's 12 and a half millimeters thick with 14 I'm uh, sorry 47.2 millimeters lug to lug so really nicely sized for most wrists and it doesn't need a lot of tricks in terms of shrinking down the size because it's actually really well sized and proportioned right out of the box um, now everything of course is in that 316L stainless steel which is fully brushed all over this case and that's one of the things I really like about it. Especially if you're gonna be spending a good amount of money on a watch um, for a watch like this that you're gonna to wanna to kind of take with you, have adventures with and you know take you you know as a companion on your journey. It's one of those things where um, yeah, it's nice to not worry about every fingerprint, every smudge. So I really, really like that. And you know, a lot of upper tier brands, they have to do the polishing. It's more to, more show, more so <laughs> to show that they can do it right and show the complexity. Um, but I like that Oak and Oscar was uncompromising within the aesthetic. And you know, although it would have shown, I think, uh, you know, hey, it's tougher to do. Um, but you know, the question is, should you do it, especially when you it looks this good fully brushed so i mean i'm talking to you aquaterra with your high polished links why uh, so um then we get into this nicely double dome sapphire crystal with multiple layers of inner ar coating and look at that so it's double dome which means it's domed on the outer portion and the inner so it means you're going to get minimal distortion even at harsh angle so you're going to get a lot of readability even at very harsh angle so I really prefer that I mean I don't mind a little distortion and a little kind of lens play um, but this is what I can appreciate that crisp legibility and of course it does tie in with the overall theme which is another thumbs up for me it also has a 120 click bi-directional rotating bezel with that 24 hour scale Ooh, and it's a pleasure to actuate and bi-directional so you can set it however you wanna calculate when you are thinking about using that 24 hour scale uh, when you're doing multiplications, or I'm sorry, not multiplications, but uh, when you're doing calculations with the GMT hand, whether you keep that GMT hand at actual Greenwich, uh, Greenwich mean time or UTC time, um, and then doing your plus and minus based off of that, or you're doing like most folks and you're just leaving that at your home time or offsetting it for calls, right? Because this is actually more of a caller style GMT to where you can set that, like for me in the West Coast, I would probably set that to the East Coast time. So I would always know what time it is on the East Coast because uh, for my channel and also for work, from time to time, I do need to know what time it is in the East Coast. So that way you can track and then you wanna track a third one, you have a meeting in France, then you offset it 
plus or minus however many you need to. So very, very useful. Um, and there are other channels that'll go into, hey, how to use a GMT watch. Um, this, we don't need to go into that, um, you know, that deep. But uh, inside the movement, oh, I'm sorry, really quick, beautifully matte done there I'd say almost like a blasted finish on that crown which is screw down and signed inside you actually have a Salita SW300 um, and then it also has an anti-magnetic enclosure which is why it this is sporting a solid case back um, so that's all kind of part of it again it goes in with that uh, theme it has a 56 hour power reserve which has you know a nice little extended amount of power reserve there off of more of the basics um, that'll get you at around uh, 38 or 41 so that's really nice um, 4 hertz sweep nice and smooth and then it does have that anti-shock bumper technology as well so anti-magnetism and anti-shock again guys this thing is more than just a watch that looks like it should be outdoors it's actually capable enough to be out and about with you um, now it comes to this dial it's this beautiful matte sandwich kind of you know of course in white um, and then it has the date nicely integrated there at six o'clock with a matching disc and font so it doesn't break up kind of the theme that you're getting with that gorgeous dial which for me is the real star of the show you're getting painted hands which are going to offer extra legibility um, and then it's using bgw9 loom and it actually has a really interesting way that it employs the loom which we'll get to a little bit later here and uh when we get to the low light transition segments it has 20 atm or 20 atmospheres of water resistance again 200 meters so if you needed to you could totally use this for <laughs> recreational diving um you know it doesn't have a dive time bezel but you could have it with you as maybe your backup. You're probably going to go uh, diving with a uh, you know dive computer or something digital anyway. So if you wanted to just take this with you for some underwater wrist shots or something like that, it would do it. Um, interesting fun fact um, about this: uh, Chase actually isn't going to do a dive watch until he gets Patty certified. So that is kind of again it goes into more than just about making watches um, even making watches that people ask for it's about bringing something that they're passionate about to the market and sharing that passion with you all um, so then we get into this bracelet which is fantastic 20 millimeter lugs which is great so it's going to fit all the great straps you probably already have it does have drilled lugs which make strap changes quite easy and it is fully articulated check that out I love the flat link style and they also did go through the trouble of making sure that that articulation was still going to be very nicely dialed in. So these are all individual links um, versus a three link style. This is a fully articulated three link setup with screw and connecting pins, milled clasp and now so we had the first star of the show right which was at the front which is that dial now we have the second star check out beautifully signed and uniquely signed we also have an extension system which is really really great and you can even see in there nice ceramic ball so again no expense spared here multiple clicks different ways to size that which is great especially when you are out and about and your wrist can expand or you're on a plane you know your wrist is going to expand uh you know with the with the cabin pressure um or it gets hot or it gets cold so that's something i can really appreciate what i like to do is just put it in its shortest section and then i'll size it and then that way i can always get a couple of extra clicks depending on if my wrist swells and it does but you can hear all those clicks there's a lot again a lot of adjustment so you can really fine tune this which i really really like and it just feels purposeful and solid not overly engineered it still flows really beautifully with this bracelet and that's not something i can say for every clasp especially one that attempts and and really nails doing a toolless micro adjust setup like that so uh, it does have a great taper that goes from 20 down to 16 and then yeah this it takes you to this piece i mean this clasp is gorgeous and i definitely outmatches um 
clasps on watches that cost a lot more. So that's always very, very impressive. So with that said, let's actually get this piece on the wrist and see how it wears. All right, guys, as you can see on my seven and a quarter to seven and a half inch wrist, this wears really, really beautifully. That white dial is an amazing focal point and it is broken down in almost sector-like fashion with that inner ring. And then you do also do have that stepped chapter ring, which has the 24 hour scale as well. Uh, which really just adds extra dimension, which you're already getting because is, this is also a sandwich dial. So there's a lot of tricks that are happening. And what I like is that none of them feel out of place, right? Like again, speaking to things like having extra bevels and high polished finishes and little ornate details. Um, the details that are here are ones that fit thematically, which I can appreciate and they just go with everything and it helps the watch flow. Look at the way that those flat links with the very nice hairline brushing. Just catch the light and roll it off. So you can get great light play without high polish, which I think is fantastic. You can see it just wears really well. I think it comes in right about at the right size. It doesn't look oversized, it doesn't look undersized. Uh, it's a full size, it's a nice sporty watch. And if you wanted something smaller, they definitely have things that are a little bit smaller. But I think this looks absolutely immaculate. Look at the way that it just kind of curves along with your wrist there. And then of course those end links do help it drape really beautifully so that articulation doesn't stop and it doesn't come to any type of abrupt uh, transition there going to the case. It just flows really, really well. Um, so actually, while I have it on, maybe I can just uh, clean up the area a little bit um, and you guys can just see how that renders uh, and just kind of some light use and you can take a look at a little bit uh, more in depth at this little package setup so a couple of extra stickers cool little information here get a little tool uh, which has a punch for um, for your spring bars and then on the other side, a screwdriver for the screw links. So really well done, well thought out. You have, of course, the handsome cap. Thanks for sending that over, team. Really appreciate that. Um, and then, of course, you get uh, all the information here about the model, which I love. And there's even more surprises that are actually in the box built in um, that this comes in uh, that I don't want to ruin for anybody because I think it's actually a really interesting and fun part of the experience. You get your watch manual. It's, you know, again, it's more of a card versus a little brochure, which I think is very cool. Take that. Then we have, of course, this beautiful um, linen kind of cottony pouch that this comes in and slides into. Um, go ahead and move a little, some bits and bobs out of the way. Oh, hey, what channel is this? That's right. <laughs> cool. So uh, with all that said, you guys have seen it now live in action. You've seen me tidy up a desk with a gorgeously capable and rugged tool watch, um, and it and it held up right so with that said let's actually get into some loom shots low light transition and closing thoughts okay we'll go ahead and hit the lights here <laughs> yes as you can see a very very interesting take on the loom first of all even in dark conditions that white dial is going to absorb a lot of light just on its own. Um, but you can see that the way you would kind of keep the timing would be based off of the breaks within that inner ring, which I think is really cool. And uh, what it, where it's really gonna shine is of course in that transitional lighting, because you're not always gonna be in a pitch black situation. And let's face it guys, you always do have your phone uh, in the middle of the night if that's what happens. But uh, you kind of get a built-in party trick with this really cool, almost Tron-like, halo that is just sitting there um, and then of course you do get the gmt hand which is also loomed and i just dig that i like that they went uh, there was a couple directions they probably could have went with this and the fact is they went with something more unique and more individualistic to the brand something that you haven't seen 
elsewhere. They had a different way to kind of play it, and, and I like that. I like that they didn't just skimp out on the loom either. They showed you, they gave you a little exhibition of that uh, with, of course, that loom pip. So if you are timing something in the dark, you can absolutely do that, uh, whether it's underwater or in the air. Uh, because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to be, uh, you know, coming in and out of the buildings, walking underneath overhangs, uh, underneath the shade of a tree, or just spending time in your favorite automobile. So it's nice to see what these colors, finishes, and textures render like in less than optimal lighting to even include some harsh, high contrast lighting where typically you'd be able to expose any types of defects within that finish. But instead you just see the light gliding extremely uniformly over those beautiful uh, links there on the bracelet as well as the play on the radial brushing done within that steel insert with a 24 hour scale there. So very, very nice. Very cool. Check that out. Look at that <laughs> again in just kind of that transitional just after golden hour lighting still extremely, extremely legible guys. Again, just take the time like that is it's crazy that it's still very legible in this amount of light, uh, which I think is great. And it doesn't compromise the look. They didn't do some weird dark loom that just burns out really quick. Um, so I, I don't know. It's just, it's different. It's cool. I dig it, but let me know what you guys think from that perspective. So guys, closing thoughts. I know this was a bit of a long one, um, on the wrist, really perfect proportions, very comfortable and balanced wear. Um, it looks and feels like a classic tool watch, which is great, but at the same time, it doesn't look or feel like anything else out on the market. In terms of model variants, you have this white dial. There's also a navy and a black dial model, which is really cool and a little bit different for Oak and Oscar. Typically, you would find uh, you know a really interesting gray um, palette, so it's nice that they did a black dial to kind of shake things up a bit, especially considering that the navy and that gray are actually pretty close in tonality when you look at some of their other models. Now in terms of comparable models, um, this price point has overlap with other higher end micro brands as well, um, as well as mainstream offers. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of competition, but I will say there's definitely a certain X factor here that's really seldom seen uh, regardless of the price point. Um, so yeah, it just, it's different. And yeah, there's other stuff that's out there that might have the same movement, similar specs, this and that. Um, but I will say that this one just, aesthetically and then just thematically really stand out for me in terms of the design execution and just uh, the overall just personality and again it's about uh, a little bit more about the intangibles of a watch um, so uh, yeah this one just really speaks to me and I really appreciate Chase and the Oak and Oscar team sending it over uh, for me to spend some time with it and share it with you guys so for me guys the bottom line Again, to kind of circle back, this watch isn't trying to be a more affordable version of an existing product. It's just meant to be the very best version of an original vision from a brand that really oozes quality and thoughtful design in a way that feels completely natural, unforced, or strategic. The Humboldt GMT is a genuine tool watch designed and built by a small group of some of the most genuine and down-to-earth enthusiasts in the business. So if that resonates with you, this capable little GMT might be the travel companion you've been waiting for. So thanks a lot, guys, for spending the time with me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this.